Next thing on the agenda then, PCS versus non-PCS or pre-ban versus post-ban. I should explain what this means. Basically, back in the day in Japan, their FPS limits were very high and then there came a time when the law changed and they had to lower them. Now, back in the early days when FPS was allowed to be high, they used to do an adjustable bolt. So inside the bolt, there is a wheel you can move, which I'll show you in a minute, which allows you to restrict or unrestrict the gas flow through the gun, going from 500 PS FPS down to whatever. Okay. When people say pre-ban, they simply mean PCS, as in prior to the ban on the PCS bolt and the ban on high FPS guns in mainland Japan. After the ban was enacted, however, Tanaka made a bolt for the rest of the world. So we were still okay. Those of us in the UK, Europe and North America, we got this. And it's referred to by Tanaka as the export model. The gun supplied with an export bolt would be called an export model. An early gun that people on the internet refer to as a pre-ban would have just been called a PCS model. Now, a point to note with this is the guns are all exactly the same. The rifles themselves, no different at all. And because you can press the button in front of the trigger and take the bolt out, that means you can swap it with another one. And a PCS model can go to an export. It's just the same. And an export model can then become a PCS with the change of a bolt. Now, what is the benefit to this? So, on your PCS model, seen here, there is this wheel, this little thumb screw. You unlock this grub screw here, ideally it will still be there, and you wind that screw towards the nozzle, and the pin in there will restrict the flow of gas through this O-ring, therefore out through the barrel. If you wind this grub screw that way, sorry, thumb screw that way towards the back of the bolt, that will unblock the flow of gas through this pathway, giving you more power. Now, a bit of food for thought here. If you're in the UK, Europe and North America, we're allowed 500 FPS on a 0.2 gram ball in old money. Or if you're in the UK, 2.3 or 2.5 joules, depending on what your site's limits are and their insurance and all that malarkey. But for the sake of these videos, I'm just going to say 500 on a 2. But, you know, your site and uh, local laws may vary. In order to get that on a PCS bolt, you have to have it all the way undone in the most cases, okay? Unless you've got a really tight barrel or what have you. Which kind of makes you say to yourself, what is the point in having it? Do you know what I mean? Like... People get really wrapped up online saying that they've got to have this version, they've got to have a PCS bolt, they've got to have a pre-ban. People are nearly like worshipping these things. I run mine on HPA, so I run all of my bolts with PCS fully open. My regulator controls my pressure. Okay, Most of the time, to save the wear and tear on the PCS bolts, which I, I do agree are rarer, I use export bolts, which is this one. It's got the cutout for a PCS, but it's blanked off inside. It's just a straight through path. And my pressure is controlled and my velocity is controlled off my HPA regulator. And you might think, well, what if I don't want to run HPA? What if I want to run conventional green gas or what have you? That's absolutely fine as well. If you've got an export bolt, or heaven forbid, a uh, Japanese domestic market bolt, which is very rare, just change your gas. So if you've got an export bolt and you need a lower power, just switch to something like uh, New Pro 1 or a bit of PC Dusty Gas or 134A, 144A gas, whatever whatever is low pressure gas in your area. Okay, Switch to that. If you're running a wide bore barrel and there's not enough oomph for you, go to some uh, Brute Gas or something. You know, there's options. In the back of the bolt, there is a shaft that contains a striker spring or the hammer spring, if you want to call it that. You can adjust that a little bit. There's a little bit of adjustability in there sort of thing. There's different springs available to give different hammer um, strike strengths to change the velocity. And this here, which is called the gas router, that can be changed for a thinner one with a smaller internal diameter. 
to slow the flow of gas out the nozzle. There's many options. You do not need to get wrapped up in the idea that you absolutely must find one of them with a PCS bolt, okay? Now, talking about bolts and PCSs, let's talk about other manufacturers of the guns, okay? KJ Works, you'll never see one of these in a KJ. They never made one with that valve. They were copying this one at the time. You likely will not see that cut out either. It's just going to be smooth. So you will either be able to restrict the power by changing that ring for, I think, Falcon Maker set, and I think there's a few other companies, Action Army maybe, for a thinner one, changing the Amos ring, or just changing your gas, or ultimately going HPA, which is enough said. Action Army, exactly the same thing as the KJ Works. You'll be in the exact same boat there, no PCS. Uh, King Arms, however, is a bit more of a unicorn. They do two versions of all their models. They do a high velocity and a low velocity. I've never seen a low velocity one, but I know they do exist in certain markets. I don't know what their bolt looks like, but I'd imagine it'll be the same as the KJ. But I know for a fact that their high power versions on their adverts for their various rifles, they come with a PCS bolt. They come with one of those, which means you definitely will have some adjustability in the bolt. Okay, hopefully that has answered most people's most burning question, which online is, do I need a PCS bolt? How does it work? Kind of thing. Um, while I'm on the subject, I'll just point out how the bolt itself actually functions. So, that there is a striker. When you close the bolt, it's very hard for me to pull back, but you'll see, that is held in the backwards position on there, like that. It's very hard to demonstrate because it's a blooming strong spring. Like so, yeah. It's held by a trigger sear. You pull that sear, and that striker throws forward. That little face of it there then strikes a plate that's going through the trigger mechanism on the gun, which hits the back of the magazine, exactly like on a gas blowback pistol. A measure of gas is then released through this uh, output valve, which, with the bolt being closed, is up against that red nozzle there, which then routes it out through the front nozzle, through your barrel, and that's it. It's a really simple mechanism. Nothing to go wrong, and like I say, you do not need a PCS bolt, it's not the end all or be all. Okay, so I hope that's answered that. Okay, so let's get on now then to barrels and hop ups. So, presuming you've got an original Tanaka rifle, you're likely going to have a two piece hop up. Okay, the two piece hop up is made up of, as the name suggests, two inner components. There's this rubber outer piece that holds the BB and seals the nozzle to provide a gas seal. That's about here on the action. Okay. And then under the adjuster wheel, which is here, lefty loosey for off, righty tightly, clockwise for on. That's a top dead centre hop, by the way. You have this patch. Tanaka might shock some people, the original inventors of the top dead centre flat hop. Okay, So that is actually separate. This is an over exaggeration of the distance because obviously you know it's underneath that uh, wheel there. But it is separate from the main rubber itself. Sort of a bit like an AEG hop on the TM M4 or something. Um, it does work extremely well. Um, the standard rubbers that come in a Tanaka are black in colour. They're not very good for anything past 0.3. Um, what you want to try and find, if you're going to stick with the original Tanaka barrels, which are excellent by the way, you want to try and find this. It is the G&G &G part number Golf-07-082. And it is a rubber set. And in that you get a new one of these, made of better, harder rubber. Your new flat hot patch and you get a new much stronger gas router okay that is well worth having i think they're about 15 quid if you're in england and probably 10 15 dollars if you're in north america um they are worth having and they will allow you to do comfortably up to a 0.4 you can go over a 0.4 with them but you've got to wind the hop on almost all the way um let's have a look here spares right this here is a spare hot wheel, just to demonstrate what I'm talking about. So obviously it's threaded, 
There is a little detent there. I don't know if the camera can hear it, but can you hear that clicking? That provides a really precise, I hope the camera can see it. There's little indentations on the wheel here. It focuses. They allow for a really precise fine adjustment. What a lot of people do, myself included, is you get a little bit of paint or something. Perhaps you can see it, perhaps you can't. I put a little red dot on there and I consider the front face of that rail to be like a clock face and I just count the turns. So, for example, on mine, two and a half, four turns is enough to hop uh, a 0.43, no drama. Um, so I just, you know, adjust it a little bit less, a little bit more, depending on what rounds I'm using and the velocity as appropriate. Okay, so that's your Tanaka hop up. Um, to the best of my knowledge, the King Arms is a precise copy of the Tanaka original system and therefore has the two-part design. It also uses a unique barrel, which you will find on nothing else. Um, so if you get the Tanaka in its original form or the King Arms version, you are going to be stuck with that unless you then convert the gun itself into a VSR barrel and chamber. Um, there are various kits out there over the course of the years for that, but the only one available at the moment is the Action Army M700 chamber. Hopefully there'll be a link in the top right corner um, to my previous video on that, but ultimately the so what of that is, if you fit that chamber, you can fit any VSR, link, uh, VSR style in a barrel that you want, along with like in my case, in this particular one, I've got an Autobot 70 degree uh, rubber and a 510 millimeter long 601 type or stainless steel one. You can buy whatever you like, though. Obviously, everyone's got their opinion on what the best barrels are. You know, I'm not going to sit here and preach about that. You can you can Google that to your heart's content what you think is going to be the best in a barrel. What I will say about that is, if you are converting to a VSR barrel. Something worth considering is the standard outer barrel length, so mine's a bad example, but the standard outer barrel length is nearly 700 millimeters, and the inner barrel is generally 650 to maybe 670. That is a long barrel. Um, to my knowledge, most VSR barrels, or certainly ones marketed as a VSR barrel, aren't that long. So you'll probably have to, oddly enough, get one for uh, a KJ Works or a PSG-1 or something like that, like some kind of big length barrel, or you have to use a shorter barrel with barrel spacers to suspend it inside the outer barrel. Or the final option is you can do what I've done here, which you can cut the outer barrel down. Obviously that will require reaming the end and having a custom uh, spacer made for the end cap and stuff. Not a big deal if you can work a lathe or you've got a lathe, um, or you know someone, but uh, can get pricey if you've got to pay a machinist for that. So something to bear in mind. Um, as for the other variants of the gun then, the KJ Works is a bit of a unicorn in that it comes with a VSR compatible chamber and a VSR type inner barrel. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think I've got one to end. Yep. We'll likely all be familiar with this. In fact, this barrel here is out of a KJ Works M700 police. But you can see there, VSR style in a barrel. You can get one of those off the internet. There's loads of, you know, um, tight standard fit ones for a KJ Works 700 police, and you can fit that to your 700 police, or you can take it and put it in this with the chamber conversion. Um, so that's a good option. Uh, the Action Army one, that to my knowledge, is also the same as the KJ Works 700. That also, as far as I'm aware, as a VSR inner barrel and a VSR uh, style chamber with the, with the single hop rubber. Um, but if you're getting an original Tanaka, you're gonna need that conversion. And if you're getting a King Arms, you're gonna need that conversion. Um, see my other video with regard to the nozzles and the chambers for a bit more info on that. But uh, what I want people to take away from this is, is that if you are in love with a certain type of VSR barrel or a certain maker barrel or whatever and you believe you must have that for this gun to shoot effectively or one of these guns to shoot effectively, you need to bear in mind that you might need to make that conversion if you've got an original Tanaka or a King Arms.
that is ultimately what I'm saying with this. Um, but what I'd also like to point out is I've got bloody loads of these Tanakas. I don't own a single KJ anymore or any of the other variants. I am looking to pick up the King Arms, but uh, on at least two of my Tanakas, I still am using the original Tanaka in a barrel assembly. Here's one here. Um, I shan't bore your senseless showing you that because likely 90% of you will fit a VSR barrel regardless of what I say about how good that is. But they do shoot fantastically up to a 0.4 as long as you've got that rubber kit in. If you don't have that, you're stuck with quite light balls, you know, Super Grand Masters, some Garda 3s. I've found shot quite well on standard rubbers, that kind of thing. But uh, I think they shoot just fine. My M24, if you've seen my Instagram page, you've probably seen pictures of my M24. I still, for the sake of purity, I run that on the original Tanaka mechanism just with those G&G rubbers. And uh, I shoot Super Grand Masters through that. And G&G 3s and Novridge 4s and various other balls. And it absolutely loves them and it's accurate as hell. Like, like I say, you only need the VSR conversion if you specifically know you want a VSR barrel. That is the only benefit to that. Accuracy-wise, I really don't think there's much difference myself, but uh, 